This is the first time since I've been doing these predictions that none of my top cities or islands were impacted during the previous hurricane season. If you go back and watch the video from last year before the season started, go to my predictions page and you'll see the video posted. At the end of the video I did mention potential tracks and the fact that we could see a tropical storm or extra tropical storm traveling up the east coast affecting many of the cities that have been impacted over the past couple of years. Last year's tracking map from the National Hurricane Center shows Tropical Storm Andrea moving up the east coast becoming extra tropical and affecting the northeastern cities that were affected by Hurricanes Sandy and Irene and then later in the season Tropical Storm Karen came up from the Gulf of Mexico and threatened the southeast but dissipated off the coast. In between these two tracks seven out of my 20 cities were predicted to be impacted by a named storm so the idea was correct although none of my cities were directly impacted. On occasion I'll make a bet about my city predictions to wear a costume to be worn at the end of the hurricane season. Well the chicken suit was the first one dragged out and that was a few years back boy that thing is hot and then followed by the hot dog suit which uh, also is very hot but a little slightly more comfortable and was even invited down to the National Hurricane Center to sit with Bill Reed and discuss uh, the predictions for the upcoming hurricanes. And just kidding, this was Photoshop. No need for Noah to get upset over this. But anyway, predictions for this upcoming hurricane season indicate it's going to be slower than normal. Well, this opens up a whole new set of cities and islands that could be vulnerable during the hurricane season. My calculations indicate that there are areas that do get hit in slower hurricane seasons. So I decided maybe I should make a bet that if none of my top five cities get impacted this year, that I will stop doing these city predictions. And then I thought, no, I'm going to give power to the people that want to see this go away. There are people in the hurricane business that do not like these city predictions, even though it draws awareness to potential areas to be affected during the hurricane season. I think it's a good idea, and I'm going to keep doing it. So I decided to go ahead and bring out the hot dog suit once again. I'll bring out the hot dog suit for the end of season video. Now before I get to my top 20 cities and islands, let's talk a little bit about why we expect a slower than normal hurricane season. Here are the model Enzo predictions of the various models indicating what will be the situation at the height of the season, August, September, and October. And if you follow the statistical average, you'll see it's right around 0.7 degrees above normal sea surface temperatures in the East Pacific. Now, if it's a little more uh, warmer than normal, we would be into the moderate El Nino situation, which would be even less named storms. And if it's down here in the more neutral conditions, we would have more named storms. Now, the thinking is the warmer sea surface temperatures in the East Pacific cause westerly trade winds across the Atlantic region which chops the top of the thunderstorms off of developing tropical depressions and causes hostile wind shear in the Atlantic basin uh, preventing named storms from developing so the theory is that we're going to have a slower than normal hurricane season with right around 10 named storms now we're predicting 9 to 11 in that range and uh, that will reflect on my city predictions William Gray and Phil Klotzbach are predicting nine named storms in their April forecast for the upcoming hurricane season. Now, last year they predicted 18 named storms. We only ended up with 13 named storms, so there is an error there. Occasionally they're wrong on this. So I'm going based on their nine, nine to 11 named storms for my predictions. During the course of the hurricane season, you're going to have hundreds of areas of disturbed weather that could potentially develop into named storms. Some of those will develop into named storms and head out to sea. Others will hit land, and that's what matters. So let's get right to my top 20. By far the most important factor for a city making the list is whether they are due or overdue for being affected by a named storm. This is important because only 15% of the cities in the database on average are overdue for being affected by a named storm. So if you're overdue, the chances increase dramatically as each year passes. The second most important factor is how many named storms are there in the basin when this area gets hit by a hurricane, such as nine named storms, 15 named storms, etc. The third factor is patterns. Is there a historical pattern to this area being hit every three years, every four years, every two years, every skipping, every seven years, etc.? And finally, 
is it comparable to a current year that's forecast to happen, such as an El, like, a weak or a moderate El Nino? Are we expecting a weak El Nino? If so, what years did these cities get hit when there was a weak El Nino? And we match them all up, put the whole formula together, and this is how we come up with the top 20. Due to time constraints in this video, only the top five locations will be given the reasoning. To get the explanation on the rest of the top 20, visit the front page of Hurricane City and click on Jim City Predictions right below the tracking chart. Now here are picks 20 through number 6. My number five pick this year, Isle of Youth Cuba, concerns me, and mainly because this area is three years overdue. This area is never overdue. They get hit regularly by hurricanes and tropical storms, and the area gets hit when there's 11 named storms on average, and that's the kind of year I'm thinking we're going to have, right around 10, 11 named storms. Not to mention back in 1968, the analog El Nino year that I'm going with, this area was hit by Hurricane Gladys which later went on to hit Spring Hill, Florida, just north of Tampa, which is my number 15 pick. So number five, I Love Youth Cuba, be ready this year. My number four pick for this year is Miami, Florida, and this area was not in my top five last year. However, they were in the top 20 because they were due last year. Now this year they are one year overdue, and Miami very rarely is ever overdue for a named storm. Last time they were affected was 2010, Tropical Storm Bonnie moved through. There was a very weak tropical storm. But four times in history, the area has been hit four years after a tropical storm hit. And in 1976 and 2006, both weak El Nino years, this area was affected by a tropical storm. They also get hit when there's an average of 10.6 named storms, so naturally this fits into my criteria near 11 named storms. My number three pick this year, Naples, Florida, has a rich hurricane history of being hit during slow hurricane seasons. The area is two years overdue, and again, this is one of these areas that's very rarely overdue, and they get hit when there's an average of 10.66 named storms, so that puts it high up on my list for the thinking of 11 named storms. There are no El Nino patterns to this area but I'm very concerned for Naples as the southwest Florida coast gets hit a lot in slow hurricane seasons. My number two pick this year is Galveston, Texas. Now this was a real challenge because this area could have easily been number one on the list this year and the only reason they weren't is because they get hit when, they, when there's an average of 9.75 named storms and I'm kind of thinking more like 11. They are two years overdue and the last time they were hit was back in 2008. Six times in history, six years later, this area is hit again by a named storm. So I, there's a rich pattern there of being hit six years later. Also, back in 1963, my analog El Nino year to this year, we had nine named storms. Hurricane Cindy hit Galveston, Texas back in 1963. Now, if you pay attention to the red circle, that is the area indicating where I think this, what the, this area will be affected within that red circle. If not, the number one city is close by and it could be a brush, but either way, the people in Galveston, Texas need to be ready this hurricane season. Now my number one pick for the Atlantic hurricane season in 2014 is Matagorda, Texas, right down the coast from Galveston. 
This area is number one for one simple reason. It gets hit when there's an average of 11 named storms. Remember, Galveston was at 9.75. This area is also two years overdue. They were also affected by Ike in 2008, brushed by Ike, rather, and five times in history when this area has been affected by a named storm, they were hit six years later. So there is a pattern there. But the 11 named storms is huge, and this whole Texas coastline concerns me for this hurricane season. So everybody living in Texas needs to be concerned. Not only that, the last time I picked a Texas city in my top five was all the way back in 2003 as I picked Brownsville, Texas to be hit, and they were hit by Hurricane Erica. And that thing came in just south of Brownsville and headed into Mexico, but nevertheless, they were affected that year. So pay close attention in Texas this year. As we look at this damage shot from the Boulevard Peninsula of Texas from Hurricane Ike, I want to remind everyone that any city can be hit in any hurricane season, regardless of whether it's slow, busy, there's a pattern, you're due or overdue. Any city is vulnerable, and everyone must be prepared to take action. We wish everyone the best of luck. Maybe we'll have a season like last year where no hurricanes hit the U.S., but in El Nino years, you always need to be careful. Sometimes you can get some really intense hurricanes out there. So that's it for now. We wish everyone the best of luck in the upcoming hurricane season. Thanks for watching.